So today we're here with Sam. Yo, Sam. what's up guys? And Sam is from where? Uh, I'm from England. From England? And you were traveling in South, South America? South America and Australia in for Australia. a year and a half. And you came to LA for this month? Yeah. And decided to pay me a visit for a guitar lesson? Yeah, that's about right. So it's awesome. He's from UK coming in for a guitar lesson. Alright, so where do you want to start today? What stuff I, No idea. Um, well, I, Here's my daily practice routine. So I usually start people with just going down the list of stuff to do. Mm -hmm. My daily practice routine. Picking exercises on the right hand. Mm -hmm. Start over there. Okay. This is how I was picking for a long time, like this. Kind of like that. Uh huh. But I like about a week ago, actually, I saw a video on when you did like did it like this. Yeah, that's how I teach people how to do it. And the reason why is because pretty much everyone who picks up a guitar can just move their arm like this mm -hmm. without any instruction. Mm -hmm. So everybody already knows how to use their elbow, right? Mm -hmm. And some people are clever enough to figure out, well, if I use my wrist, it's less motion, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people play with their wrist. Tons of people play with their wrist. But everybody keeps their fingers stiff, right? Mm -hmm. and they lock them down and they use their wrist. And I was lucky enough when I was real young to have taken lessons from a lot of jazz guitarists. And these jazz guitarists always played with scalpel picking. And they taught that to me a long time ago. And what I did was I noticed that Jimmy Page uses scalpel picking. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, okay. If Jimmy Page knows it, does it the same way as my teacher does it, it must be right. So I just pick with the thumb and first finger, right? And a lot of guys mistake that as going with the wrist at this angle like this. It's more, if you look at the horn on the guitar here, mm -hmm. the angles will come from the horn all the way back to your elbow here. It's like that's the angle of the pick, right? Mm -hmm. The pick is, is at this angle, right? But we're not, we're not sawing at that angle. We're sort of sawing back and forth this angle. So it's like this. The pick's turned, but we're going pretty much up and down like this. Can you see like really close? See, I'm not going like this. Yeah, okay. okay. I'm just going like this. I'm going to hit my wrist and do that. So try. That looks good. Something like that? Yeah. Hold on, hold on to it for a minute. Just keep it up for about 30 seconds. It'll stop fear of feeling weird after a few days. It looks really good. Just get used to it. Because the fastest way to pick is like this, right, with the scalpel. Then when you want to go faster, you combine that with a wrist, like that. And that's what's called serro picking. It's really fast and loose. A lot of guys can play fast like this. Just like muscle here and muscle here. Just Don't get me wrong, everybody can play fast that way. But do you want to play fast that way or do you want to play fast this way? Just relax. So that's the way to do it. Now try it on your acoustic so you get another feel for it on your acoustic so you don't... Yeah. Because that's a lot easier to play than an acoustic so you might be cheated with the feel. Just lay on it. I guess it counts just fine. Okay. But you can use it just as well on acoustic as well. Oh, hell yeah. Totally. Yeah. So try this. That's actually perfect. Really? Yeah. Does it feel weird? Mm -hmm. Or less weird after doing it for a few days? Yeah, I have already been trying it out for like a, like a week, so I guess it's less weird. Now you also have wrist picking like this, where you can put your wrist on the bridge here, and try to just move the wrist back and forth. Like that? Yeah. And that's a technique you should also know too, because a lot of times you want to...
wrist. You know, if you want to get a muted sound like that. Or like a funk guitar sound. Right? It requires that you stop the strings from ringing excessively by muting them with the side of your hand. So that's another technique. So just doing the wrist like that. Like if you're muting, you want to rest your palm there. You can play electric some more if you want. I just wanted to get the feel for electric music. Let me tune that one up a little bit. Sure. Make sure they're both in tune. So where in the UK do you live? Um, like just south of London. Because that's where my parents live, but I, I haven't lived there for a little while. Doesn't Jeff Beck live down there too? I don't know, does he? <laughs> Surrey. Surrey, yeah, that's where I'm from. That's where you're from? Yeah. I think somebody, that's where Jeff Beck's house, house is. Cool. I went to uni in England, and then I went and worked a little in Australia. So you went to college in England? Yeah. And right after college you went to Australia? Pretty much. That's cool. Just decided? Something like that, yeah. And how welcoming are the Australians? Very welcoming. Just like, hi. Very cool people. You show up, hi. I need a job. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's actually a little bit like that in Perth. It's really easy. <laughs> I was actually hoping, like, uh, today maybe you could, like, just have a look at, like, my left hand position and oh, make sure. Oh, absolutely, man. We're, going, we're going down the list here, man. There you go. Yeah, man. I'm glad you came, you know. It's a real treat to have someone from another country just find Turn me on YouTube. Studio, huh? Find me on YouTube and then stop <laughs> it's, by. It's pretty cool. Did you have a hard time finding the place? No, I looked it up on Google Maps, and uh, you can get the the bus Pretty right accurate. from the, You get the bus right. You took the, the bus. Yeah. Oh, you're crazy. Man. I took the well. I didn't have a car or anything. That's oh, alright. I, I had the day free. I got the the metro from North Hollywood, and then got the bus from the center. How long does that take? Four hours? No, it's about it's about an hour and a half. Don't it, doesn't the bus like zigzag and go down to San Diego and go no, to San Francisco? Is it like a it's a like Silver Street bus? It takes about an hour. It goes on the freeway. Hour and a half. So all these people driving on the right side of the road, man, what does that feel like? I'm pretty familiar because they drive on the right in Australia as well. They do? They don't drive on the left? No, in Australia they drive on the right. It's only England, really. I what about think. New Zealand? Oh, I don't know. I've been to New Zealand. I thought Australia they drove on the left. No, it's on the right. In Tokyo, Japan, they drive on the left, right? Yeah, yeah. China? I know they drive on the left in England, Ireland, Scotland, and South Africa. And Mexico City, right? I haven't been in Mexico. Actually, either. Mexico City's both. That's weird. <laughs> they just drive wherever they want. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like a lot of cities inside. <laughs> they have roundabouts, right? They go in both directions? <laughs> that might just be in France. <laughs> you just dive in? Yeah. You just hope you don't get killed, that's all, right? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> all right, so here's the, that's the peak and death technique. <clears throat> gotcha. Oh, is it bad a bad habit to have your pinky down like that? You know, it's really not. Oh, okay. It's all no matter how you want to look. Oh, I don't really care about that. I just want. To oh, if you want to, you know, sound if you want to play and you want your hands to come in tight like this and your left hand to look good, you know, for me, I used to put my fingers down like this for dozens of years, you know, like that. But I like the way it looks better like that. And it sort of feels better now this way. A lot of guys will play with their fingers out. But if it helps you, you know. Um, I would say try without it. I just keep trying to bring it up. Mm -hmm. Because the reason why people put it down is because they feel like they get lost. Mm -hmm. Feel like they don't quite know where they are at. And that just comes from years and years and years and years of mileage of playing. Of knowing exactly where you're at, mm -hmm. like you need to calculate. All right, 
Here's a couple lifting exercises. We'll do the open string like that. Okay, then I like to do these uh, three note patterns like this. Now try this one, open four, seven. Watch this, I'm gonna go up a half step and up a whole step. So it's like this. It's just an exercise to keep your left hand doing something while your right hand is just doing this, right? Because this is a real boring exercise. I mean, you can sit here and watch TV or a movie or something. You know? <laughs> so here's a little ditty on the left hand. Double up like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, then take four notes like this. Again, these are just picking exercises, so don't get too yeah, worried yeah, yeah. about what's going on here because it's just a way to just make it a little less boring, you know, and to give yourself some coordination, you know. So you can take any scale, like you can go up, like by ear, you can play a major scale, right? That's a do, re, mi scale, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so by ear, you can just find the notes like this. Right? Just do that by ear. You know, if you have to worry about what finger you're going to use or anything, and then you can make a pattern out of it like this. Let your ear tell you what scale pattern you're going to do. But this is just a way to just get your left hand and blood flowing while you're working on this. And then double up like this. So you double with the right hand. We want to come back to the right hand. We're going to we're just going to get right to the left hand there. Okay. Okay. Now, left hand exercise, classical form. That's going like this. Put your thumb behind the neck. Imagine if there's a stripe in the middle of the neck. Mm -hmm. Put your thumb behind there, behind the middle finger. Mm -hmm. And you want to play with the tips of the fingers. You want to play with all four fingers curved like that. The one behind each fret. Mm -hmm. And we just do this. We just go up four frets at a time like this. Less hamstring. See what I'm doing here? Mm -hmm. Try it. So you want to, when you land here, Take your eyes and stare right there with your eyes. Mm -hmm. Then when you keep staring there, land your index there. Then do the same thing here. Oh, uh, yeah. You get it? Yeah, that's fine. So you got a degree in physics, huh? uh, a master's degree? Uh, no. Just what a, what uh, do they call bachelor's. it? Mean? Bachelor's degree in physics? Yeah. Are you going to go back and get a master's degree? No, I don't think so. Just want to work? Uh, I can't see myself working with my degree, I don't think. No? No, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I don't think it's going to be physics. Okay. I kind of like a three years of uni was kind of enough to put me off it. <laughs> yeah, I, uni is what? What's uni? Like a college. <clears throat> university. university. Okay. A lot of hard work, wasn't it? Mm, yeah, Maybe. but I don't know. I think kind of got disillusioned with the subject, I guess. Well, after grinding it for so hard, you know, you do. You tend to. <laughs> What are the semesters like in, in England? Is it the same thing? They start in September or they start in Yeah, August? it starts in September, except we don't call them semesters. We call them like a, 
like a term. term. You have three terms in a year. So semester till what? Till so, so like September till Christmas, and then like uh, after Christmas. Work till Easter, and then till summer. And when does summer start? Like uh, like just after Easter, and then it goes to like June or something like that. Well, that's cool. So late very, late June, not very long, or early June. I can't actually remember. It's been like a for you. <laughs> year and a half since I was in uni. wipe your memory clear. While <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's called the form, okay? Okay. That's doing the form. Okay. Now, next one's a spider. All four fingers on one string. Lift up and lift, land these two. Lift up and land these two. Look. Like this. Watch this. Here's a little thing. Good. Huh? So did you play any music in Australia? Uh, yeah, I guess, but um, like I wasn't, I didn't practice very much when I was in Australia. I only really started since I was traveling, because like, you have a lot of free time when you're traveling around. You're always waiting for something or sitting in a hostel somewhere. So I was like, well, we might as well get serious about practicing guitar, you know? So yeah, I had like two or three hours most days. What about South America? What'd you do down there? Uh. I went. I started in Argentina. I went. Uh, did you visit a little the bit in Patagonia? Me. No, I didn't. I missed out that part. That's like in the south of Argentina. I didn't see that. Mountains or something. Yeah, there's a lot of mountains in South America. Like uh, I went to Brazil for a little, and then I was in Bolivia for four months. What's that like? Poor and uh, but awesome. It's like uh, Bolivia is like. They have all different climates there because it's all like half mountains and half steamy jungle. And I worked in this wildlife park as a volunteer for six weeks. Yeah, in the middle of the jungle. Oh. With like uh, puers and jaguars. They have like a, it's like a like a like a big cat refuge. Wow. Yeah, I walked a puma every day. It's pretty badass. Are they mean and shit? Uh, some of them are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that looks the, good. the one I have was pretty friendly. So this, that's like that, that's the spider, right? That's one of them. Okay, now the next one, we go like this. Okay. You know, I have a real problem getting these two fingers very far apart. Is that like... How would Murray, you got it takes years. Oh, okay. Just gotta think about it a lot for a lot of decades. <laughs> to get them very far apart, I think more than a whole step is kind of exaggerating. You can, I don't really do that. I mean, a whole step is kind of pushing it, really. That's like, but I'm like, like, like that is. <laughs> That's all right. You're fine. That. Don't worry about it. You're fine. So here's this one, right? We got. Uh, we did this one, and then this one, right? Perfect. That looks good. So I'm gonna check these off on your list as you go, okay? Okay. Oh, this is so much easier to play than my acoustic guitar. It's so nice. You can spoil them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're standing here with a friend right now? Yeah, I'm couch surfing actually. Couch surfing? I haven't heard that before. Oh, really? It's like a. It's cool. It's like a website. That's cool, man. Couchsurfing.org. You like. Oh, you join up and you like people let you crash out. Yeah, it's literally how it works. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> and they don't care. They just. Well, they they put their couch on there and they're like, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, anyone that wants to come and stay, send me a message and maybe you can chill with me. So I sent messages messages to a whole bunch of people in LA. And, uh, That's awesome, man. Yeah, That's brave. Cool with Lucas from, uh, oh, I did What it, does he do? He's a. Um, he works on, he's like a construction guy for film sets. Oh wow, he lives hardcore. In, yeah. Okay, so here's the first one, right? Yeah, okay. The second one like that, right? The third one, it's harder. It's like this, the hardest one. So you just bring a sleeping bag with you and just 
I don't even have a sleeping bag. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I did it in a. It was kind of kind of funny when I first went to Buenos Aires because I didn't speak Spanish when I arrived in South America, and I was couch surfing with guys that like didn't really speak any English either. So I, I had to learn Spanish pretty quick when I was still kind of staying there. Did it work out? Yeah, it worked out great. They were really friendly. Yeah, really friendly. I didn't have any bad experiences in couch surfing at all. Anything in the States? Any bad experiences here? I, Lucas is the first guy I stayed with. Oh. I flew straight into LA from uh, Medellin in Colombia. That's cool. Man. That's fantastic. I've never heard of all this, but it's great. You know? Most people have to check into a hotel and get a rented car and all this Yeah, kind of yeah. couch surfing is really cool. <laughs> All right, cool. So that's the first three of the spider. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a big printout I'm going to give you a little bit. But that says there's a whole bunch of them on there. There's this one, right? Whoop. And then after that, we just do one finger at a time with that. And then the middle finger like that. Now, if you can't do this one, what you want to do is take your middle finger and just try to go on all the strings like that first. Ooh, it's hot. You got it. So it's like this, like that. Yeah, okay. And you just come back. And the middle finger here, watch this one. Okay, the next step after you do these is you pick them like this. You want to go. So I'm going like this, right? So I'm going. I'm just going up the string with the pick, right, with the pick notes. See? These are just coordination exercises, okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, so. When you come back, you can do the opposite way. and flamenco guitar are very strict about when you play a scale leave the finger down until you need to use it and the classical teachers I taught were all Nazi about that all the time I show people that on YouTube and I get trolls telling me that's a useless technique that's a waste of time but it really is classical technique why why is that good it's just that? The thousands of guys of over hundreds of years have developed this tradition of playing scales that way and also a lot of the classical music has multiple notes in it where the notes are ringing out so a lot of times you play a scale where you want the notes to ring really predominant in flamenco music you know having one of the bass tones be playing let go of them. So a lot of the scales that they train in classical and flamenco they use. You, you learned classical guitar? Like first? No, actually later when I was uh, about 15 or 16 I started plunking around in classical and then uh, when I was about I'd say 19 I had a, a good classical teacher uh -huh. for, for a few uh, years and uh, he was a real stickler for technique you know and uh, just an unknown guy you know old guy went to his house and he was a great classical player and I think he had a degree in music but uh, he he only had a small handful of students and that's why he wanted to keep it you know he was not famous or anything like that you know but he was a very sharp teacher he knew the technique really well and then I had a jazz guitar teacher who also knew classical too and he had the same approach exactly the same so I had a lot of training in that you know mm -hmm. but that's the thing I teach people on electric 
A lot of people, unless you play like this, their fingers flapping all over the place. <clears throat> Even really good guys like Steve I will play with his finger way out here like that. And you know, we're gonna fucking argue with Steve I. And he can't because he's like one of the best on the planet, right? But I'm sure if he were sitting right here, he would agree, well, you know, I would try to, if I had to do it over again, I'd probably try to train with my fingers more tighter in. Mm -hmm. You'd probably say that, I would guess. So I just teach people the classical technique because it ends up being a much tighter, more faster technique in the long run. This is okay, you can work through it, but you, you're, it's like walking down the street like this, as opposed to like this, right? You're moving way too far away from the strings. You're exerting all this extra effort to do the same thing you could, but it's just by doing this. You know, I see you guys play like this. So badly, I try to correct them a hundred times and I still don't get it, you know? <clears throat> so all the classical guys I like have this flawless, flawless technique. So that's, that's the marker. That's like the holy grail of technique is classical guitar. And that's four or five hundred years old, so you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to argue with that, you know. I mean, they've, they've been doing it for centuries that way. And they've proven. One of my teachers told me, I, you know, because it hurts at first to do classical technique and it feels really uncomfortable. <clears throat> and he says... As, a, as opposed to what, like... like as opposed to playing like this. But aren't you kind of, like, muting all these, all these strings with your fingers if you play, like, with them really flat like that? Play with them with your what? Like, wouldn't you be muting all these strings down here if you have your fingers more, more flat? Like that? Yeah. Yeah, you probably would. But I'm saying, guys who play with the thumb over the top, okay. and they're really far away from the strings, as opposed to playing like this. And the way you do is you tilt the neck up like that by your ear. Makes it much easier. So. Mm -hmm. But does it matter, like, I don't know, you've got kind of a bent wrist going on there. Does that yeah, matter? you want to avoid, you want to keep it as flat as you can, like this. Not like that, so you're flat. Maybe if you get it in closer, then maybe that would work. Yeah. So you go like this. Wiggle your fingers. Mm -hmm. Now go like this. Wiggle them. It's harder, isn't it? So you don't want the swan wrist. You don't want to compensate by making a wrist bend. You want to flatten it out. You know, you may have to adjust your thumb a little bit up here, but. <coughs> You know, when, when you're playing with a, with a group and you're soloing with a band or whatever, it's kind of a, a moving target, really, because you're just going with uh, the melody of the, of the solo that you're playing requires your hand to be in whatever position you land on, you know? So it's a kind of a moving, flexible target while you're playing a gig or something like that. When you're practicing, you always want to do proper technique when you're practicing, right? Mm -hmm. So here's the, the spider, so we did this one, right? Next one is the ladder. The ladder is just going two across like this. And you just keep the other two fingers just like chilling there? Like yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how long are you going to stay in the States? Uh, till the end of the month. No, not very long. And then you're going to go back, to, back to England. And when you get there, you won't recognize it, huh? Something like that. I think that's going to happen. Huh? <laughs> Do you have a place to live in England? Um, yeah, I guess I'll stay with my parents for a while. And then are they are they kind of cool with you traveling all over the place? They don't care? Well, I think my mom kind of probably wants me to come back <laughs> after a year and a half. <laughs> you should freak him out, man. Tell him, you, tell him you're arriving at the airport and then send a black guy into the meeting. <laughs> like, yeah, I got a freaking ten in South America. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now here's the ladder. Watch this. Yeah, okay. You pick it. You pick it as well. Yeah. Just down up like this. Down up. Down, up. Three. I'm gonna go through these real quick, okay? One and three, and then one and four. Do you have like this little bit down? Oh, I'm gonna print them out in a minute. Okay. 
And stretch one and four. Now you can do it one note per string like this. Or two notes per string like this. One and four, then we got two and four. Okay, two and three. Strengthen up the pinky. Yeah, there you go. Or is it? Do you skip strings? Is it like both. That or is it, oh, both. You do, both. do both. Why not? You know the old joke, right? How do you know when you're overweight? You go to a restaurant and you look at the menu and you say, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll do everything. There was a comedian named Rodney Dangerfield who had that joke. <laughs> So that's the ladder. That's what I used to oh, practice. Should you, should you, what should you do these other fingers be doing? Two things you can do. You can let them hang. Yeah. Or you can be real strict and hold them down on the second string. That looks a little bit That's the ladder. All right, we'll check that out. You get it? Mm -hmm. Okay, next one's a trill. Trills are like really, really boring and really like people start practicing and they just go, this is really dull. But they're actually the best exercise you can do on a guitar. And they're so boring, they're so dumb. <laughs> it's just this, it's all it is. One and two, thumb behind the neck. Like a hammer on a pull up? Yeah, but for like 20 minutes. Are you with me? Yeah. Let's, let's do it for one minute and see what it feels like. You'll start to feel it in your forearms. The muscles will start to burn. It's just like going to the gym. Start feeling it. <laughs> Feel it? Yeah. It starts to hurt? Okay, shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Keep shaking it. Let it rest for a second. Mm -hmm. While it's resting, if it's really burning, you can always just do this, you know. Just practice picking for a little while until it starts to heal. And then <laughs> you know, when you, once you recover, <laughs> and you recover, you go to the next finger. One and three. Shake it off, shake it. They're gonna shake it for a minute here. Just loosen that up, loosen up those tendons. Okay, let it rest and then just work on this for a minute. You know, you can, you can work both hands this way all day long, you know. Mm -hmm. But these two are just such nuts and bolts basics, just the picking and the trills. 
that everybody bypasses these exercises. Mm -hmm. And I learned it from a classical teacher, and I just like thought they were this the ultimate, you know, because it's like that's the basics of the mechanical end of lifting you your finger off. Feeling the, the oh the, the, the trills, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, now let's do one and four. <clears throat> These are really important for strengthening up your left uh -huh. hand, right? After one and four, we do two and three. Kind of yeah. That's why I'm going to have to work on, work on that one, okay? Shake it off. Okay. Two and four. Finger down on there as well? I do, yeah. I'm just used to putting yeah. fingers down and leaving them on the string. Okay, so is that one okay? And the last one, <coughs> three and four. <coughs> That's it. Now you know you got some work to do on that one, huh? Mm -hmm. Three and four is the weakest one, right? You just gotta sit there and work it, you know. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And if you come back to it, like in about three hours, you try it again, it'll be a little bit easier. And then later on this evening, try it again. <clears throat> if you try it three times a day, your strength will increase by like, exponential within days. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. So that's the trill exercise, okay? I have a quick question. Yeah. With your thumb on the back of the guitar, does it really matter if it like bends out like that or comes like you, this or I, whatever? Say, I don't think it should be like that. Yeah. Mostly like that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, the next one is a X pattern exercises. Uh -huh. And that's just making an X shape. Start with three strings like this. <laughs> string no, I'm, on a, I'm on adjacent strings third string second string first string right here on adjacent strings oh third. I see and then come back this way so that's the pattern it looks like an X right with, with three strings the string we're using are the first three only. Oh, okay. Yeah, so now we're gonna go down, up, down, up, down, up. So here's the exercise. It goes like this. It goes. Yeah, so you 
And now four strings. Down up like this, or just pick in one direction like this. You add a whole step between these two, so you're gonna do this. You have to keep them all held down, like what can you lift on your index? I'm trying to stretch the. Scales. And chromatic scale is when we did our classical form like this, going up the neck, right? Mm -hmm. So now we play the scale like this. That's called the chromatic scale. Oh, okay. And back down. First string. Now go to the second string. Third string. Fourth string, right? You get it? scale. Now the chromatic across the strings we can do start here on the fifth fret and we're gonna go across this way. Mm-hmm. 
Five notes per string up here, like this. You play four notes on one of the on strings, the, on the, on the either string. on the B string or on the G string, you oh, choose. Yeah. Again, avoid that slide sound. Strings shifting the first finger. Okay, now we'll do the same thing. The next one is chromatic across the strings shifting the pinky. So it's like here we got this one here, right? Then the pinky shift is this one. Third chromatic scale. Now, the fourth one, the fourth chromatic scale, we do with a six notes on each string. And that's like this. Both fingers. Mm -hmm. So it's like this. Watch this. Right here. Watch. 
He was shooting both hands, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you gotta think. Okay, try it again. That's good, then you land here. That's the ninth fret there, see? So you start on 12 up here. And then go to here. finger permutation patterns mm -hmm. okay um, permutations being a, a math major you should be really right at home with this permutations are just numbers one through four mm -hmm. permutated so you have 24 permutations of four right right so you got one two three four right so we're going this is not a chromatic scale it's a chromatic style scale okay exercise so it's a style of the chromatic because they're all next to each other but a, tr a true chromatic scale is like this. All the notes in a row. Yeah. When I go like this, it's a chromatic style scale exercise, okay? Mm -hmm. So the first one is one, two, three, four, going up like this. Yeah, these are real barn burners for your left hand. Watch this, here's the exercise, this goes. Permutation one two three four right. Mm -hmm. So the next permutation after one two three four would be one two four three right. One one two four three right. Is it? <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. Okay. So the one two three four. The next permutation would be one two four three. So you can go across like this. Watch this. stuff is the best stuff for your left hand. You can feel it already today, right? Mm -hmm. All right, then what's after one, three, two, four? I'm guessing it'd be one, three, four, two. Right, see, that's the logic here. I'll print out the list of them, don't worry. Yeah. Good. Then after that is one, four, two, three, right? One, 
four, three, two, right? Okay, so those are the start of the permutations, right? Starting with number one, then you've got four, you got four permutations. You got permutations starting on number two, and then the permutations starting on number three. I'll give you the list a little bit, okay? Then you take these things, these, these permutations, and you do movement patterns with them. Okay, there's eight ways you can move on the string. Way number one is going up the string. Mm -hmm. Number two is going down the string. Number three is going across from the top to the bottom. Number four is going across from the bottom to the top. Number five is going from the top to the bottom at an angle. Number mm -hmm. six is going from the bottom to the top at an angle. And then back Number seven one. is going from the bottom to the top at a reverse angle. Mm -hmm. And number eight is going from the top to the bottom at a reverse angle. So we're just going to, for simplicity's sake, use permutation one. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So here's the first movement. Just going up the string. And back down. Okay, the second movement, going across, across the other way. Good. Now, next way, from here to here at an angle, so you want to go. Now, this is new for a lot of players to play this way. No one ever really teaches them how to move at an angle. But it really is going to be helpful in the long run. So it's like this. Next one's like this. patterns which is we take out one finger so you can do three fingers like this or three fingers like this or three fingers like this this seems to be like covering every single possible way you can move your hand on, on it, it is it is because if you want to get good you got to know this stuff yeah yeah if you want to get beyond just playing routine patterns that all the schmucks know and you want to really get into playing whatever you want to play, yeah. your hands got to be able to react in any direction, right? Okay. It takes years to get them all down. Don't worry, but it's like you'll be way ahead of everybody else because they won't. They don't ever train this way. Yeah. They they'll just train in like the standard licks and stuff like that, yeah. which is fine too. But if you want to get into something different, you know, any other kinds of strange or sounding licks. Your hand's got to be able to do it. Right? If you want to hear something in your head and you want to execute it, and your hands just stumble, then you got a lot of work to do. Okay. okay. So, three finger permutations. Start with this one. I'm going to go across. Now, one thing I always want to remind people is that anything at all, anything that you play, on your left hand, anything at all. You can also make it a picking exercise. And here's how you do it. And when you do this, you can double up. Or triple up. So there's 
one, two, three. And of course, one, two, four. <laughs> pattern may not be a scale, but it teaches you how to move in a way where if you apply it to a scale, you can get some interesting things with the scale. Like here's a G major scale. But if I play a G major scale in the pattern of one, two, four going up the neck like this, I can get melodic ideas like that. Or the other way like this. And it's all in the same key. So you've already got the technique established by doing this so you just convert it to a scale yeah, okay. and you get some new ideas that way or you can backtrack like this so it's like these techniques kind of teach your fingers how to move and then when you later decide that you want to make a jump to here or something then it, it's there you already know how to do it exactly is that right yeah okay this is the key the Shaolin monastery the exercise <laughs> Do this for five years straight, then you'll then you can start practicing guitar after that. <laughs> Just one week on the first finger and second finger, next week on the first and third finger, one month on the first finger and pinky, one month on the second finger and pinky, one month on the second finger and third finger, <laughs> and then six months on the third and fourth finger. That's the routine, that's how you practice, man. Six months all day doing this. <laughs> but nobody can do that, right? <laughs> but if you do it every day a little bit, yeah. Throw it, it in just there. creeps in after a few weeks, you start getting some strength. You'll be you'll see, man, in a year from time from now, if you stick to some of these exercises, you'll have friends that'll play guitar that you'll look at them and you go, You suck. And then they, you pick up the guitar, they'll be going, Jesus Christ, what the fuck, man? <laughs> how did you learn how to do that? You know? Because your hands will be a hundred times stronger than theirs. Mm. That's the number one issue that most people have when they're trying to take a solo, mm -hmm. is they're weak. They have their fingers they can't bend, they, they don't have no stamina. So you gotta build it up. The Shaolin Monastery. <laughs> Zen. Zen, yeah. All right, so we did one, two, three, right? Yeah. One, two, four. But how do you like, uh, how do you like choose what exercises to do? Because there's no way you can go through this whole list in one day. Like, that's just not. It's not really okay. Possible. See how it's seven modules? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. It's designed. I designed it took me 30 years to design this. It's designed so that let's say you've got a half an hour a day to spare, five minutes in each module will make you a well rounded musician. Oh, yeah, so equal, equal times in each, in each thing. If, if yeah. you, you know, have a limited amount of time, if you have an hour to spare, 10 minutes in each module, that's a 70 minute practice session. And you don't have to do it all straight away, 70 minutes. You could do 35 minutes in the morning and you know, 35 yeah. minutes at night. The ultimate place you want to be is spending your entire time in Module 7. Right. Tunes and repertoire, learning songs, learning how to solo. But if your hands need work first, you know, you got work to do with your hands. Once your hands get up to par, then you can spend more time down here in the songs mm. and the repertoire. So, so many guitar teachers, all they do is they teach the tunes in the repertoire, so everybody learns well, some that's songs, because you know. it's like uh, more fun than sitting there doing sure. patterns. But you came here for the other reason, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, if we were going to do it for fun, I'd say take a lesson up at the music store where I teach, you know, and then all you can get in line with all the other little kids and we'll just go like this, you know. We'll do Green Day. <laughs> you know, but uh, if you want to learn technique, you've got to have a plan. And you got to stick to it for a long ass time, you know, like two years a minimum of sticking to the same plan. And I can give you the plan. You can modify it however the hell you want. You know, you could take this to another teacher and, you know, take his ideas and add them to this one, or he may steal these ideas and add them to his. It's all fair game, right? But just add it to your own knowledge and add it to your own arsenal. The stuff I give you is just, just add it to everything you already know, right? You don't want to toss out everything you know. You just want to add to it. Okay, so we're talking about one, two, three, one, two, four, and one, three, four. Okay. And so then like, last, lastly, mm -hmm. two, three, four, right? Okay. So like, like, just going back to this for a sec. Say for example, you were going to do ten minutes on this. You're just like 
pick pick like a couple of these these exercises and just sure. do it for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. But I would do the same one every day for like four days in a row. Oh, okay. So you get good at it. If you okay. jump around too much, you don't really get good at anything really well. You know, you want to get you want to sort of nail down one exercise really well and really be really tight. I used to spend five, six, seven hours a day going through this list. You know, I mean, each each section I thought was an hour. You know, mm -hmm. and that's what I did for years. I spent an hour on each one. You know, a lot of times I was in the morning. I would spend three hours on this one. It's three hours on picking, that's man. Dedication, man. Well, that was me when I was twenty. You know, it's every three hours, a different hour, and do this, man. Didn't he get really, really bored? I didn't, because I was all I was motivated. I wanted, I wanted to be as good as McLaughlin. You know, yeah. I was like. <laughs> I was like training for the Olympics, you know? Yeah. I can see that. My poor roommates, they were just like going, What the? <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> well, worse than that, when I was younger than that, my poor mother. <laughs> when I was in high school, I didn't have time to practice these, all right? <clears throat> so I'd get up at four in the morning. Holy shit. And I'd drink tea and like sit there with a metronome, clack, clack. I the most annoying noise for everyone. Yeah, else and, and then I'm like, and my mother would come into the room and just knock on the door. I go, Pepper, it's five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Isn't there some other time you could practice your guitar? I look at her and go, I understand. I agree. But no, I must practice now because I have to be at school in two hours. I only have two hours. But she just look at me and go. <laughs> just irritated as hell, you know. <laughs> so I feel for, I feel sorry for him now. And my poor roommates were like that too. They would just think you're fucking nuts, man. And after a while, people would see I play gigs and I could really whip it out. I could really play. They were like, "Oh, that's what the result is." Mm -hmm. Okay, the guy can fucking play, you know. And that's the difference, you know. You look at a guy who can really play anybody, and you realize there's hundreds and hundreds of hours behind that. You know? You got to see a guy rip around the fingerboard. You go, the guys been playing that way for like ten years, you know, not just one month, you know. Mm -hmm. So all these exercises, uh, I wish I could give you. I'm running out of time right now, but uh, you can go back for another one while you're still here if you want. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Wait, wait two weeks or wait a week, whatever you want to do. You know? yeah, it's up yeah. to you, man. It's your money. But uh, I can take you through a lot of stuff in the next hour. Mm -hmm. And you give you a ton. Like, this is easily, if you just took, took all the stuff and went home, these would be a couple years worth of practicing stuff to just get it down easily, two years, mm -hmm. maybe even three. Well, let me print out all these files for you, yeah, okay? That's great. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is Sam from the UK, ladies and gentlemen. All the people on YouTube, say hi to Sam. Yo. <laughs> Bye.